let's just go ahead and get started. When, when Suzanne came up to me and, and asked me if I'd like to participate in something like this, I was just like, of course, I'd love to. Um, not only because you know I love to talk and I love to hear myself talk, but also because I, I really honestly feel like I have something of value to offer people. And again, if it's not your cup of tea, then you know just shut your eyes and just you know wish that I go away. But otherwise, you know, kind of just open, open up your you know open up the, the mentality. Um, maybe he's got a point. So I wanted to talk about the ideal man solution. Now, so many of us immediately when we think of the ideal person, the ideal man, and just to let you know, I think um, everyone, every woman in their life should have a gay, right? And especially one that's been, uh, especially one like me who's gay, Mexican, and adopted, because <laughs> our viewpoint is just a little bit off than anybody else's, but the theories work, right? So anyway, um, the ideal man solution. I think when we start dating, when we, when we get in the dating realm, we immediately start with an open blank canvas. We don't know um, what we don't know what to expect, right? Now, in which I have right here, and I'm, this is very interactive. It's, it's cutting edge, y'all. So, <laughs> what I have here is uh, my my book. It's called uh, Your Dating DNA. Now, I just want to read one little quick section of it, real quick, where it talks about, um, in technical terms, your, day, your DNA, right? Just your DNA is the substance that carries the genetic coding of every living organism. It carries all of that information. It's stored in your DNA. Your dating DNA, on the other hand, is a collection of beliefs that you carry with you from dating experience to relationship experience on how you think your dating or relationships should be experienced, on how they should be. So it's a collection. So whether it's you're collecting these ideas from what you saw growing up or from what you saw on TV, I do sex in the city, um, these are the beliefs that you're carrying around with you. And so what I'm trying to get folks to understand is that your dating DNA, you can actually alter it and make it healthier, and you can actually um, revise it into a format that's a little bit more comprehensive and, and not so idealistic, right? The TV shows always tell us that uh, if you have a, an allergic reaction to shrimp, then your perfect man's gonna one day walk up to you and be like, no, I don't eat shrimp. And you're like, oh my God, that's a sign. You know? <laughs> <laughs> or if you, know, if you feel like the cost of tap water, if you feel like tap water is the same as bottled water and you refuse to buy it and you meet a man at the club that says, I don't know why they charge this, the same thing. Oh my God, that's the perfect man for me. These are the things that the movies in Hollywood like, will have us believe that you're gonna find these people, right? And if we keep searching that way, it's it's going to be such a hard and long journey. So what I'm trying to what I'm trying to get folks to think about is that ideal man solution. And I'll get right into it, which is we all have the deal breaker list, right? He's got to do this. He's got to do that. He's got to work here. He's got to be you know uh, X in the bedroom. He's got to be you know tall, this tall, this weight, British accent, <laughs> you know. And you know, when I first started on this dating journey myself, um, I had my list as well. And and I think the one book that led me to like a path of lonely nights and a cold bed was The Secret. And I'm sure some of you have heard of The Secret. And it tells you basically that there's a there's a portion on relationships that says, you know, you gotta wish it, you gotta want it, you gotta envision it, so do your vision board of the man, of the accent, of the car. And so, and then it even goes far as to say that you clear out some drawers for your future man. And you clear out part of your closet for you, because that's where he's gonna be handing some of his clothes. Now, obviously, they didn't live in New York City where closets <laughs> things <laughs> like the most precious thing available. But I was, even when I was reading that, something was off for me. I'm like, I can just clear out some closets. I got it like, it, and it just didn't seem right, right? So I went through a different, I went through a different journey. So my journey was basically, I created my deal breaker. You know, they had to be create for me. This was mine, right? They had to be creative. They had to be, um, 
nurturing, they had to be honest, they had to be um, just very ambitious. And I went out to the club with a friend of mine, and that night, he was kind of, you know, on a desperate search to find somebody, and we ended up at a restaurant afterwards, and I was just like, well, what are you looking for? Like, what type of person are you looking for? He's like, I don't know, and I don't care, I just want a body. <laughs> and, I, and I, you know, and I was just like, but what's going to happen is that you are going to find a body, and you are going to find someone that's not really defined into what, it's not going to fit into your lifestyle. And he's like, well, what are you looking for? And I pulled out my list. So I was like, there you go. And I was like, they got to be creative. They got to have ambition. They got to do this. They got to do that, you know? And he's just like, you're crazy. That, that's not the way it flows. So um, a couple of weeks later, he calls me up, and he actually met someone, you know? And, and I was just like, OK. So then I was doubting myself. I was like, well, maybe my list is not that good after all, you know? Um, but the very next Sunday, I actually met somebody online, and you know, this is 2011, and this is you know the the internet technology phase of dating. So you know, I met him online, and we chatted for a little bit, and then he actually came over. He came over, and come to find out, he had his own. He was doing his own startup. He was in advertising. Um, he was very creative, and. To me, it was like just going down the checklist of, oh my goodness, he has this, he has that. This is really, this is really cool. And uh, we spent some time together. We kind of got to know each other for a little bit. But then he told me, you know, I promise to, um, I promise to, I promise one of my coworkers that I would go to her son's birthday party. So I can't stay that long. All right, mommy. And when he left, I couldn't stop thinking about that connection. And I couldn't stop thinking about, um, oh my goodness, he, he had that creative spark so on with that vision, he's doing his own startup, yada yada. And later on that night, I got a phone call from him, and he's like, I'm outside, um, I'm outside your apartment building. And I was like really excited. He's like, calm down, I got something for you. So I went down, and, and again, um, I, I say this because when I'm thinking about it now, it's kind of dangerous. What the hell am I doing? <laughs> And he turns to me, he's like, I bought you something. And he, and he takes out the little plastic goodie bag that they give at the birthday parties. And he had brought me the goodie bag with candy and with like little, it was Spider-Man themed, like little Spider-Man action figure. And again, I was just like, this is the sign, you know? He's the one because, you know, like, he's ambitious, he's caring, he's this and that. And then we went about two dates, and then I never heard from him again. And I was just like, what happened? You know? And I think everyone has gone through that. I'm hoping I'm not the only one. <laughs> Where you meet someone and you really, really feel that that's the one. And you just go crazy about them. And then they never call you back. You know? And you're just like, and just to give you like my credentials of why I'm up here, these are my credentials. I've been stood up, lied to. All of that. So I don't know if some of you share some of my same credentials, but this is where this came to be. So I had to reevaluate at that point and say, but I was following my price my deal breaker list, right? And I eventually just got to the point where I just got that list and threw it out. And I was just like, I'm done with dating. And so I was about six months dry stuff, just all by myself, working on my blog, working on just things to get myself going and things. Because I think sometimes we need that refocus. We need, to, we need to recharge up, right? Just like your, when your phone dies, charge it back up again, and just use all the energy out before you plug it back in. So about six months later, um, I, I decided to go back out there again on the scene. And this is when like a lot of dating bloggers started blogging about the non-date date, which really pissed me off. Because I'm like, what happened in the six months that I was gone? Now people are not only not dating, they're non-non-dating, you know? Have you guys heard of the non-date date? Where you kind of just, you're just like, are we on a date or are we just hanging out? You know? 
<laughs> like, have you, have you done that? Guy just calls you up, hey, you want to go out to the block, but it's not enough. So you're just like, is this a date? Am I, am I on a date? You know? <laughs> so the bloggers, the, the sexorati created a non-date date. And I was just like, we're so angry. Because I was just like, how can this exist? So anyway, I put myself back out there again. And uh, the very first date I went on, the very first date I went on after that, kind of connected with somebody. And I, I created what I call how to create your first perfect date, how to create the first perfect date outline. And I followed it on that date, and it was an amazing experience. We connected, we got to know each other. And, um, you know, and then I didn't have a question after that, meaning, is he gonna call? Is he not gonna call? Am I gonna call? Am I not gonna call? Because he's probably wondering, like, in the gay world, Who's the one that calls me? <laughs> <laughs> we still struggle with that ourselves. I mean, we're in the same boat. But what ended up happening was we went on a second date. And on the second date, right, so my the, the guy I was going on didn't necessarily have all the things that I was looking for, right? There was no, he didn't have the creative spark. Um, ambition, my mission was there, but it was like unfocused. Um, the talent, you know, I, I didn't know, we didn't talk about that. It was just like, what do you do? Well, I work at a cafe. Oh, okay. Normally, I would have been like, duh, you know? And then already shut down on the date. But I was just like, you know what? He's an amazing person, and I'm feeling the connection here. Not sexual tension, but just the connection. And he was so amazingly hot to look at. And so we went on the second date, on the second date, we're, we're taking a walk along the river, and then I see him go like this, and I'm talking, because I always talk, and I see him go like this again, and I'm like, is he having like a nice stroke? <laughs> <laughs> and we keep going and going, and then, I see, and then finally I say, what are you doing? I don't understand, could you please explain to me? And he's like, no, what this building right here would just make a really nice photo. And I was just like, oh, okay, I didn't even think about that. Now I'm, I've been doing photography for a while, but that just wasn't on my mind. By the third day, he kept doing that so much that I said, well, do you have a camera? <laughs> <laughs> and he was just like, no, just on, my, no, just on my iPhone. So on the fourth day, I brought my camera with me, and I said, here, just do your thing, you know? And I followed him along as he was taking photos and all of that, and that inspired him to go and buy his first camera and sign up for his first photography course. And we've been dating now for two years. Oh. And this is him right there. <laughs> um, and my whole point to this whole thing besides embarrassing him is to let you know how sometimes you have to allow those things that you want to organically come into that partner that you're seeking because they're not always going to have it, you know? And by allowing yourself to do that and be open and stay open, you'll really, you'll really end up being surprised. And of course, you know, I'm not the perfect person. I'm sure he's waiting for things to blossom in me. But the thing is that we're doing it together, and the main thing that counts is that we're on the same page when it comes to our goals and our values, because I, I feel like we're very honest with each other, you know? And that's the one thing I feel that was lacking with that other person that never called me back, is that he never, you know, if, if, if you're honest, if you're operating from transparency, you let the other person know what's going on, what you're feeling, why you didn't call them back, why, you know, what's going on. But that's, that's another case. But I wanted everyone to just take a moment and think about their deal breaker list and either revamp them or just do away with them altogether. Because sometimes those things that you're looking for are gonna be there immediately when you meet that person. All right? Um, I don't think I have time for Q&A, which is amazing with me. I do have time for Q&A. Okay, um, questions? Yes? I actually have a question for him. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Is it weird for you that he um, was writing about love and sex and all these things? For the first month, um, it was. 
it was um, kind of weird because I didn't know anything about blogs or stuff like that. And then he, he told me all that stuff. But it was it was different. Like well, it was one of our first arguments yeah. because yeah. eventually when I told him, you know, we're blog I'm a blogger, and after I told him that he was, I was, con I was just like, I was constantly reading my blog. I'm checking Google Analytics, and it was him. <laughs> and he was constantly seeing if I was writing about him. Right. And eventually, we did have a fight, and I blogged about that. Right. <laughs> my, blog, my blog isn't so much like, you know, oh, this happened to me, what was me. It's actually like dating tips, relationships, advice. So it was a fight we had that I thought was important because I learned a lesson out of it. And he told me, you know, no, you, you're, you can't write about what's going on with us. And I said, well, that's going to be a problem because this is who I am and, and this is where I'm, this is my journey and this is the journey I'm following. So we have to reach a middle. And I, I, for us, because uh, because of the writing, it's it's always been if there's a lesson in there that I've learned that I feel other people should learn or could maybe learn something about it, it gets written up. But it's never like then we came home late. And <laughs> <laughs> That's not what my blog is about. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a full disclosure. I never used to write about blogs. Like I never used to write about blogs. Like I will wait until I actually have to tell them. So that's what I do. And it, I it, would it's wait after sex to tell them. <laughs> When I went out with this guy, he was a magician slash comedian, <laughs> and he was just like, I put all my dates in my app, so, and then I just got like super nervous, you know, and then I tried to combat it with, well, I put all my dates in my blog. <laughs> and so the date was just horrible. It was like a Bethany Frankel special. <laughs> you know, everything was like, cut, take two, do that again, because we wanted to be in each other's acts, and we wanted to be in each other's blog, and it was just worth it. But like, if you're in the industry, that's a whole separate issue, right? Of like, when do you disclose? Yeah. Yeah, and for the longest time, he thought that I was with him for material. And then I was just like, you know, they're eventually, I'm just like, after our third fight, and after like, we got sick food poisoning, we're throwing up, and I'm like, you still think I'm in it for the blogs? Like, <laughs> I was gonna say, I know that you mentioned sometimes you have to allow, you know, a relationship to blossom, qualities to blossom, you know, in your partner or mutually, how long is too long to wait? I mean, I think that that's the problem. A lot of people do have expectations and they give their partner too much credibility or are a little too optimistic and five years later they're like, maybe that is him and there's not any changing. And but here's not the thing, I think there's a difference between, you know, okay, I'm going to go ahead and date you, but you better be this by, you know, February 18th, right? I think there's a difference between that. You're, that means that you're still holding on to that deal breaker list, as opposed to me who just, I just let it go. I was just like, you know what, I'm, so, I'm much more interested in what he has to offer as himself, and so what if he doesn't have a creative spark to him? So what if he doesn't this? Now he's done, um, he's got his own photography uh, business, He's done, uh, he's done photos of Halle Berry, he's done photos of Rachel Zoe, you know, but these are things that I never could have predicted, or he himself could have predicted that were going to happen, so I didn't have a time frame. So to answer your question, I think you just have to really realize, am I still holding on to it? And if you are, then that might be a little danger zone, right? It's like when you hire somebody, uh, an employee, and you're just like, I expect you to do this, 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 and that, and a little intern, and it's just like, I don't know how to do all those things. Those are your expectations, and I might not be able to like you. I think uh, a little bit of a struggle, though, with the list, and then the concept of settling. I'm sure there's an in-between, and I think it's that fine tuning the in-between that people want to help with, because you don't want to feel that whole concept of what you're settling. It's like this thing now, you know, but you do have uh, things that you're looking for, you know, so it's just a little difficult to navigate that in between the break. You discover that right there. Yeah, you know, it's thing for us as humans. We, we tend to put everything off on the other person, and I've always been a two, two sides of the, of the scope person. So it's just like, well, he doesn't have this, he doesn't have that, blah, 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 but I never stop to think about, what is he thinking I don't have? Mm -hmm. 
right? Okay. And so and that's why I took those six months off from gaming, so I could work on I could work on myself. Although I didn't know what I was missing, I had to concentrate on me, right? Some of my insecurity portion, some of my um, what I really want out of life. Because I think sometimes we're so out of focus in other areas that we think that finding that partner is going to like push us into like, oh, okay, now I got it. And it does, like it honestly does. And having a partner is amazing and it's great, but it just adds one more component of stuff for you to have to you know, work along with. Because I think sometimes we get into the thing that dating is hard. Dating is the most worst thing ever. But once I find a boyfriend, ooh, all the work is done. I'm here to tell you, that's when it just begins, right? Because keeping, maintaining, keeping a relationship is one of the, one of the hardest things that you'll ever have to go through. But it's fun as well. So it's not like hard work, like, oh, I gotta go, you know, unclog the toilet bowl. But it's just like, because you're dealing with the whole person. You're dealing with like, their background, their dating team. What, what collection, what ideas do they have in their dating, dating DNA that's maybe in clash with yours? So it's like unraveling that and trying to meet someone in the middle. Um, Suzanne? Um, I don't know where we are now. Yes? You mentioned there's that perfect first date. What, what, what was that? Well, and that's actually going to be my second presentation. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's my second presentation. And it's, you know, the things to, uh, the things to, uh, to do to have that perfect first date. And I really, really stand by that because um, it, it really shaped up mine. And I know for a fact, I posted it on my blog, and a lot of people that have followed that format have really come out on top. And that's actually But, you know, <laughs> Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, deal breakers and like personality traits? I guess what I'm trying to say is, so you were seeking somebody for the thing of seeking for myself as an example. So I want, I'm Indian American, and my ideal guy is like he's an Indian. So if, like Ratik Roshan or Shadow Khan, which one? Um, <laughs> yes, except they, my ideal guy would be Indian American. Okay. Raised in the US. Like, okay. Although they are hot Bollywood actors. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to let you know, like if you've never seen a Bollywood movie, it'll really screw you up <laughs> in your dating DNA. Because I dated only Indian and Pakistani for about two years, wanting to get sung at, wanting to get. <laughs> I did, and it was just like, I think when I figured out no one's going to sing to me in front of a fountain, <laughs> maybe I should go on. But maybe, like for me, it was such a fantasy, right? So romantic, I think it really, like, did damage to me. So I had to, like, figure that out, you know? But is this really what I need for my dating DNA? No. But go ahead. So, so, um, so yes, I agree, because I think a lot of my generation deals with a little bit of that since Bollywood and the romance of Bollywood. My, my question really is things like ambition and creativity are personality traits, but a deal breaker, for me, if I meet a guy that's not an Indian, then that's a deal breaker, right? Because if you're not Indian, you are not my ideal guy, right? So I'm just speaking about like certain and for me, as compared to like personality. Right, and for me, it's all about, for me, it's all about um, where did you get that from? Like, where are your dating DNA? Is that people? Like so solidified that if they're not from Indian descent, it's it's they're, they're not native over here. So for me, it's like figuring out where that came from because I certainly myself, prior to German here, um, I never dated anybody Latin. I just did mine was opposite of me. I didn't want to date anyone Latin because I came from a Latin family. I just you know I knew how the machismo was and and I was just like that, that's not for me. And it's funny because now when I call when I call home to say I was dating someone Mexican on top of that, I'm Mexican, he's Mexican, I come from Texas and we're all Mexican. And it's like my my family was like, so you traveled six thousand miles to go meet with the Mexican. So I myself had to for me it was it's a personal journey that you go through, whatever results you're bring to this. 
and whatever is in your dating DNA that you're holding on to, that you have to either let go or re-examine. And it might be, you know what, no, it's, it is a deal breaker, but you also, you're limiting yourself, right? Because I know that there's some fantastic, great men out there who will see you and be like, oh my goodness, you know, I would love to like get to know her or whatever, but at, at that point, you're cutting them off. So you just have, for me, it would be figuring out where in your dating DNA did that concept come from? Was it all the years of Bollywood or just, you know, your, your, your heritage, your family? And then you have to just allow yourself to be like, is that something I'm willing to continue on the path of? And if it is, then you got to deal with your, those consequences, you know? Or do I open up to something else? Because I know that's a, that's a big deal. That's a big issue for a lot of, for a lot of us. That's valuable. I, um, I I never thought about it from the perspective of let me examine why these are important qualities. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and that again, this is something that it's it's all about exploring, right? Like where in your dating DNA did that idea come from? And it's like digging and digging and digging. It's not like psychoanalysis, so you're just like you know, but it is a little, and it's fun. I think it's fun, you know, to kind of explore. And these are the things that I did to kind of prepare myself for my relationship, not knowing that he was out there, but just knowing that it was going to happen, right? And just one last thing. I just read, and it's so funny because this morning I was reading on psychology today, and this goes with uh, what now was saying about how sometimes you just envision, envision that person, and sometimes envision, envisioning doesn't isn't always going to cut it. This study, they did research on people who either envisioned a new job or envisioned a new partner, and they felt that just by doing that visionary work, they stopped, give, they stopped pushing forward. Meaning, well, I'm just thinking about it, so that's step one. No, it's not. Like step one is getting up out of bed, taking a shower, and putting your resume online. That's step one. So they actually said, this study in Geneva, the researchers found that when people envision, like, oh, I'm going to find the perfect me, and then just leave it at that, that you will never really find that perfect me, because you got to take those action steps, which is amazing, because I think this is our step one. So I just want to say thank you. <laughs>